Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Planet Zoo. Very exciting announcement. We are finally playing around with some of the Wetlands DLC today and we're going to be building an Asian small clawed otter habitat. So you will see that I've marked everything out in red plaster, something that I'm going to start doing with builds in the future just to give me a little bit more of a, a blueprint to work from. And I want this to be a walking habitat with a underwater section and an underwater viewing area and then an outdoor section for the Asian small clawed otters. Now this is a, a little bit larger than actually what it, what it would normally be recommended at, but I do plan on having a number of otters in this habitat anyway. So we're just mapping out the basic uh, footpath structure of how the interior of this building is gonna look, and then we'll start building our exterior and our brand new walls and things like that. One of the things that I do need to point out is we are not having a warm season here in Northlands. This is Northlands, by the way. <laughs> um, we are in a little bit of a pickle since the latest update where the temperature changes, whatever they've made to the uh, mechanics of the game, mean that snow does not lie anymore. You can get a bit of snowfall and then it goes, but we don't have this snow covered landscape, which is a little bit of a shame because Northlands is meant to be viewed with a blanket of snow and we don't have that at the moment. So hopefully that'll be patched out soon or there'll be like a, a, a small patch just to address that issue uh, because the zoo does not look as good as I want it to look at the moment. <laughs> I like to cover up the imperfections with that blanket of snow. So it would be nice to have that blanket back, please devs. Thank you very much. Um, so we are going to be working on our basic uh, wall structure that is going to be repeated throughout. So we're just going to be using some arctic wood patterned uh, blocks here, as well as some of the posts and things to stick them into and add a little bit more dimension. And then we're going to make a little, little lip. Now this actually gets covered up, but it is nice to have because where it is repeated and visible, it looks really good. And it just adds a nice little extra touch to those walls and stops them looking flat and boring. So we then just duplicate this and move it all the way around to create our first structure. We have a little staff building there on the side that you might be able to see as well. I'm doing a custom floor for this using the Australia wood planks. I just think they look really cool and they're a nice color differential for the rest of the wood that's in here. If we can get them low enough and then mix them up a little bit so it doesn't look like too much of a repeated pattern, we'll be able to create a really nice floor. Uh, I did notice though later on when I was doing the kind of walkthrough bits that there is a little bit of a clipping issue in various parts. So that may be something that we go back and touch up um, a little bit later on or perhaps in another video. So the, the location of this is actually somewhere between the... Uh, it it kind of runs along behind the Arctic Fox Rescue Center that we have put in place. So there's a lot in between there that is now dead space. I was working on a Arctic Wolf habitat and possibly an elk habitat as well. That is going to be an all um, over the top uh, viewing area so you're going to be able to look down through this forested section and see the wolves and the elk in their natural habitats obviously separated we don't want the wolves to go hunting the elk but yeah that was something that i started just before the pack so look out for that that'll be coming soon uh, but the pack dropped and i was so excited so i wanted to make the uh, small claw otters we're making some planters i love using plants in the guest areas because i think they're some of the best ways to really finish those areas off and make them look a little bit more fleshed out so we're doing a nice little mulch carpet all the way through here with these custom planters moving on we're going to decorate the viewing area now we're just going simple at the moment with some of the uh, topped dry stone wall pieces and then adding in a few pillars and posts just to uh, bulk out the uh, area here. I wanted to use some of the decorative pillars from the Arctic pack so the ones that have kind of like yeah that that guy the little bird um, so we <laughs> duplicate that throughout and then put a couple of like basic pillars in between just to to add a little bit of a pattern because uh, I wanted this viewing area to look really nice and this kind of has an almost uh, Grecian or Roman temple like structure to it but using the Arctic wood and uh, dry stone it looks a little bit more of a earthy <laughs> yeah, so it's a little bit weird, kind of like half Viking longhouse, half. <laughs> um, yeah, a bit weird, but it was kind of the style that I really liked to go for. And uh, because I'm still not, it's been a while since I played the game, to be quite honest, and a while since I recorded a video that was like a proper build. So it was quite nice to just get back into it, stick to a little bit of what I'm used to, but mix it up with a few different parts and pieces. I'm um, like, yeah, I keep saying this every video. I'm nowhere near as good as some of the other builders out there, but I like what I do and I like to share it with you guys as well. And I hope you enjoy watching them. 
Uh, the other thing that I was going to mention is we're going to be, I'm hoping to stream soon. And the streams are going to be a little bit different. I probably won't do uh, many complex builds because this this was an eight hour build, I think. And uh, I don't have eight hours to stream and you don't have eight hours to give me to stream. So there's going to be uh, some smaller tidying up bits and pieces and things like that. I may uh, revisit a couple of already built exhibits and tidy them up a little bit or we'll make a couple of like new little guest areas and stuff but i want to just get back to the build here because this was uh something interesting it was these were the uh, arctic wood planters that i kind of smashed together and made some nice thick pillars with and i run those all the way up to the roof eventually i just thought that was quite a nice little touch i was looking for something that was a little bit thicker but uh had a little bit of an orthodox an unorthodox shape shall we say to create something that was a really nice kind of signifier of the end of this wall or fence piece and that was really nice and uh yeah it was a little bit different just to play around with two things and make them something that they actually traditionally aren't i then took these cast iron fences from the european pack and just mashed them into place uh, just to give a little bit of a barrier so that guests don't fall over next up we're going to move to our staff area here and once again we're just duplicating that wall piece bringing that into position and making a slightly bigger than what i anticipated staff area uh, I just wanted to, one of the things I have noticed is we need to redesign the work zones here in Northlands and reassign some of our staff because uh, animals aren't getting their habitats clean quick enough either because there aren't enough staff working in a particular work zone or because uh, the distance between the staff areas and the work zones themselves is too great uh, and, and the habitats themselves are too great. This actually is coupled in with the work zone for the arctic fox rescue center and there's now a, like a, a staircase going between the two of them so at the back of the arctic fox enclosures there's a staff path running all the way down to this one but there aren't enough staff servicing it so when they're over here dealing with the otters the arctic fox habitats are getting dirty they're running out of food and things like that so yeah i've got a lot to think about when it comes to that and we maybe need to redesign some work zones and fit in a few more staff areas or maybe just rejig some of the ones that we currently have or maybe our staff just need a little bit more training because we have not done that <laughs> and <laughs> we are now starting to feel the effects of not having properly trained staff or uh, properly assigned work zones we are working on our viewing area in this section now and I wasn't sure about this for a while. It took a, a little bit of time for this to settle in my mind so that I could create what I was looking to do. And we did a little bit of adjustments to the barriers. Just now that we've got the uh, main structure in place, we need to bring things up and get everything in position and just tidy it up a little bit more. You can see what we're starting to come up with now. Back over here, we're gonna put a roof on now. And again, the roof was something that took a while. Uh, it was a bit complex at first uh, and also before then it was way too simple and I don't like a simple roof I like things to be a little bit more nice and decorative and you will see we come in with more planters and stuff I really like the idea of these buildings all being kind of eco buildings and having mulch growing on the top of them and things like that I also played around with some of the new decals the uh, damaged decals that came out a couple of patches ago that I've not actually used yet they came out with the European pack I think and they are incredible for just adding that little bit of dimension to your building uh, uh, yeah something I really had fun with using and I'll definitely be using again in the future just uh, create a nice weathered effect on some of your buildings like make it look like they've been there a while or that you know you you in a particularly harsh terrain and may not necessarily have the time to tidy everything up and actually now that i'm looking at the roof uh, in this recording session i'm starting to see areas again where i could put more things on little things like service ladders and things like that so that uh, staff would have access to the top of a building and things it's just all about finding those extra finishing touches just to really kind of close off your builds and make things look really nice so into the underwater part of the habitat here we just wanted to create something simple down here i think it was pretty easy and and pretty like quick going uh, i think maybe i could have spent more time on it but going into this section of the build i kind of spent a lot of time doing the exterior and i think this is something else that i need to manage a little bit better when it comes to building is to actually just make sure that i'm not putting in too much in one part of the build and then getting tired and neglecting another part of the build so this may actually come back for a refresh at some point or maybe we'll do that on stream uh 
Uh, incidentally, if any of you have some tips on streaming and things like that, that would be really good to hear. Or if you do want to uh, give me some suggestions for what Planet Zoo stream stuff you would like to see, that would be really good as well, because I don't actually watch a lot of Planet Zoo streamers myself. Uh, I know a couple of people do the, the live stream things, and it's pretty cool to watch, but it's just about keeping those things entertaining. I do suppose, like, you, with Planet Zoo, you can be here for the content and not necessarily the creator but i'd like you to be here for the creator because i uh, you know i'm a pretty nice guy <laughs> anyway we've got a few toys and stuff in here for enrichment and then we're just fleshing it out now the thing that i really like about the asian small claw dot is is they can take a lot of plant coverage before they don't like it and i've said this before in other videos plant coverage doesn't necessarily matter but when you're playing hard mode franchise it kind of does because while the animals don't feel the effect of it, your guests somehow are all incredibly well versed in what animals need and what needs they are being happily fulfilled in their enclosures. So they will point out that an animal looks like it could do with a little bit less foliage in their habitat and that affects their mood and if they aren't happy, they will ask for refunds. Uh, one of the things that has been happening lately with uh, Northlands in particular is I've been getting lots of refunds uh, <laughs> because while I'm building or I'm running parts of the simulation to make sure a water feature is working or something, nightmare. Uh, rest of the zoo management kind of falls off a little bit and we have to <laughs> and that's where things go wrong but uh, a lot of it is just guests generally being unhappy now the zoo itself is pretty highly rated but we could do with increasing a number of other things i just tried out some of the new water features here and i've decided that i don't like them i think the mist and uh, the bubbles are okay but the mist looks way too um like the textures look so samey when you've got a large body of water seeing the textures fly off like that just looks a bit strange so i think i'll probably stick to the special effects stuff because you got a lot more control over that i mean the bubbles are great uh you can create some nice tanks and stuff but i think they are mainly for creating those hot springs and stuff for the japanese macaque or whatever else you want to have in there having a little bath so i'm pretty sure that that's what that mechanic was specifically designed for uh to get those bubbles in place and the mist as well so really like smaller ponds and things i think it would be quite effective in but not large bodies of water like this one which is a bit of a shame because it would be nice to have that kind of blanket texture anyway coming along using some rocks here to flesh out the entrance to the pool and i would like to come back here and revisit this and just do a little bit more work on merging the tundra rocks here with the faux rocks that we have in the rest of the tank just so that there's that little bit of like synergy between those two blocks and textures because at the moment it's very flat and it's very much it you're in this section now and then you're in the created tank section so it'd be nice to blend those two together did some interesting things with lighting a little bit later on as well using the new world those that are really like vibrant neon almost uh, tree trunk kind of things i sunk them into the uh, uh, the actual rocks themselves so there was some nice kind of like patches of light one of the things that failed about this build that i haven't shown in the video i wanted to make an otter run so that they could go up some log paths and and run along uh, at a height uh, like some of the otters that i've seen at my uh, local aquarium over in tynemouth and then I wanted to kind of have them go on like a ramp up to a little bit of a higher um, nesting area, which you saw me at the beginning of this section of the video drop that down. That was because the otters just simply would not use the ramps or anything that I'd put in place, no matter the angle that I had them at. So unfortunately, we had to scrap that idea. Uh, I'm wondering if I, I'm going to do a giant otter habitat here as well. So I'm wondering if when I put that in for the giant otters, they might be able to use them as well as they're a, a bigger, a bigger animal. So we'll just see how that works anyway. But we did a little sleeping quarters here, just hidden at the back. And we cover this up with a little bit of foliage to make it a little bit more private for the air. Uh, otters and then we moved in to hiding our mud pits now i really like the mud pits but i don't like that wooden border i like things to look like this has just kind of been a mud pit that we've dug in naturally so it kind of creates that illusion that it's actually just this big solid mud pit and not like a little sand pit that has been filled with mud so i like things to just be blended in with the environment a little bit more and the mud pits are one of the easiest enrichment items to just hide because you put in a few rocks and then you bring the terrain up to uh, match that and it just kind of sinks in 
I had a heater in place, but because we are now in a state of perpetual summer, this might actually not be an issue when it comes to heating. We have actually had to cool down some animals in other exhibits, like the grey seals got really quite uh, distressed because they didn't have enough access to colder temperatures that they're used to. And, and again, the update has caused that. So sinking in a little bit more foliage just to cover up any imperfections in the rock work and just make sure that everything's fleshed out and looking really good. Just move that water plant air water trough so that we could have a little bit more space in there for them. I don't think I've actually seen them use it and uh, a lot of the enrichment items I've not really seen them interact with so I'll need to get some research done so we get something that may be a little bit more auto specific. It would be nice if there was like a little rock uh, like a rock box. Uh, we know like <laughs> otters have like particular rocks that they use as tools or like keep hold of like some sort of toy that they don't want to let go of. It'd be nice to have something like that and see them playing around in the water. I don't know if that's actually Asian small claw otters but I've seen otters do it so it'd be quite nice to see. Finishing off with this staff entrance area and um, just really simple again putting some wood panels in just to cover up the uh, bits in between. Now I could have just used one of the actual wall pieces here but I just wanted to do something a little bit more custom even though it is really simple. <laughs> um, I just thought it would be nice to do something like that. It gives me a little bit more control over that. Bringing up the barrier even though I don't actually need to because that height was pretty perfect but for now I quite like it having a little bit of height on it just to bring it up to the same level as the rest of the walls of this building. It just makes it look a little bit more natural. And then that's us bringing up that uh, planter pillar that we created, which I think looks really cool. We could put in like a couple of extra bits and pieces onto that to make it look completely finished. And then carrying the pillars on all the way up to the roof line. And it is finally starting to take shape. This was a, a long build process and there were a lot of things that were happening with it that I wasn't particularly happy with that I reversed and changed and this roof in particular was one of them uh, so it was really tough I did consider putting all glass on here didn't like that so decided that I'd leave it open the original idea was to actually have kind of like a, a, a big rounded structure from that started at the very back but it, every time I tried to create that it got too big uh, the, the height just went insane and then there were moments where I thought, can we have like a curved almost glass shelter going from where the pool would be, curving over into the actual path that runs alongside the entrance to the building. So there were a lot of things that I'd thought about and tried and just nothing seemed to sit right. Next up, we're just going to do some trims on the top here, something that I really like to do. And one thing I have forgotten to do is actually just put a sign signifying that this is not a enclosure if you've got this really nice big wide open entrance and, and nothing to signify what the hell the guests are going into so <laughs> that was a little bit of an oversight on my part but this one is all about just finding those extra little areas now in the build where i need to put these trims in uh, sorting out any imperfections and putting in those all important finishing touches and then of course i need to sort that roof out so the roof yeah as i was saying uh all roofs in this game seem to be a point of contention for me. I have a great deal of difficulty like constructing them and coming up with some sort of inspiration for one. And yeah, I, f I end up just going back to the stock Planet Zoo roof structures and putting a little bit of decor on top of them. And I don't like it. I'd like to do some of my own custom roofing and things like that, but it's difficult. It's difficult. So we'll just have to see how that goes in future builds and stuff. And once I get a little bit more practice, I'm sure it'll be okay. One of the things that I did do in this build was actually get a little bit more of a grip on where I'm going to be putting my guest area items and things like that, like the donation boxes, the education boards, uh, soundtracks and things like that. Because I neglect that every time I get so focused on the build and then I get to the end and I'm like, where am I going to put? And then just slap down a few education boards that don't really sit right. So it was nice to actually think about that and kind of have that in I'm trying to get get a build order down for future projects because it'll make my process a lot quicker uh, now I never plan anything everything's really off the cuff I say this every time <laughs> but yeah it would be nice to kind of have like a, a build order that we start with like external structure foliage blah 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 and then I would know that I would just tick those boxes every time 
And here we're finally putting in the foliage in our planters. Now I did like to leave this to last just in case I needed to make any adjustments to those planters while I was fitting in areas for guests. And that's just one of the important things that I think I, I like to do in my process. And I really like what I like to see is you build this external area and all of this flat colored space and you have those extra little bits of structure on top of that as well but then you're left with this blank canvas to paint colorful foliage on top of and that's when you see a build really come together when you put on those extra pops of color and this area now i think looks fantastic it's not finished yet there's still lighting to do something that i forget every time as well but i remembered well done me i'm getting better at the game <laughs> um, but again it's all about that like final finishing touch and if you are still messing around with your base canvas you aren't gonna get a worthy finishing touch and you're gonna see yourself wasting time going back and making corrections and things so i've learned some really important things about my own personal build process and bear in mind 20 episodes in on saltwell safari park and what i think this is the 13th or 14th episode of northlands so long process about and i actually only have about 400 hours in the game now i was looking at my uh, play time so yeah um still a long way to go to be better than i currently am but i really enjoy it it's so relaxing for me and i really loved getting back in with like i said at the start of the video it's been a long time since i actually played and put a lot of effort into creating a habitat so it felt really good to get back in here because this game really chills me out uh, it's nice to just mess around with things and create things and then obviously the payoff is seeing the albeit computer generated animals having a really nice time in a habitat <laughs> and uh, uh, something very wholesome about it especially these guys because they're incredibly cute anyway back to the build we're just uh, gonna like take stock of things which is always important to do once you've finished a particular area in a zoo all of our foliage is just about in place and then the roof time to tackle the roof so i wanted to make a little bit of a trim here running all the way across the top just to add a little bit of an extra dimension onto what is already a flat boring roof and it's just kind of working out how we can do this effectively without making it look too busy so these archered 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 these archered structures um these arched fence things I've gone from overly elaborate to arched fence things. Um, I think look really cool. I've used them before in another part of the zoo. I think we used them at the uh, Funicular Railway Station. So it was nice to bring them back. And it, it again, you kind of like, it's good to keep themes going and keep them constant throughout a zoo. So we did that. And then put some of the posts in just to add a little bit of a signifier because they weren't quite matching up properly so i thought i'd create something a little bit artificial but it didn't sit quite centrally so we moved that around a little bit more carrying on we actually then moved the glass up about one meter you can see us just finishing off the positioning for this now and then gave it a little bit of a lip on the top with some arctic wood one meter high panel so it's about a half a meter rise so it sits kind of like right in the midpoint of that um, arctic wood fencing that we've added to the middle there and then we threw down some of the new grass coverage uh, props and then put a light dusting of flowers in just to create this kind of green space on top of the roof i then put in my custom solar panels and i uh, actually wanted to create a little bit of elevation on these so we angled them a touch and then using some of the corrugated uh, corrugated wrought iron fence posts from the european pack we created a actual stand for them and i created four solar panels using this method spread them all the way across the top of the staff building to create these custom made solar panels and these are really simple uh, you may not have seen when i did these i can't even remember what video i did these in um but i just wanted something that you know was a little bit industrial and customized to go on top of something and just give a little nod to the fact that we're aspiring to be a green energy zoo even though underneath this there is a diesel generator <laughs> but the guests don't see it everyone so we're really green 
Uh, no, I really like the idea of the solar panels, and unfortunately, because of the uh, the need for maintenance and stuff, they need path access, and also you can't actually put anything over the top of them because they are then blocked, and you don't get the sun's energy hitting them. So down below, on the other side of this, there's actually a solar panel. That is a real working one. Oh no, I deleted it. Yeah, we were having um power issues, so I had to delete it and put the transformer in. So yeah, the solar panels are fake. <laughs> But it's just a TV screen with a custom in image of a solar panel on it. But I think it looks really cool and it's a, a really nice little touch on the end. I may actually rotate them all around 180 degrees so that when you look at the front of the building, you're seeing the uh, panel that way. And uh, the last bits were just to put on a few different uh, finishing touches, a little bit of roof trimmage and things like that, just to really flesh this one out a little bit more and add some extra pops of colour and dimension onto it. And then we put in, our, oh, as you can see there, we've put some of the decals in to make it look a little bit more weathered and worn on the roof as if we've had a little bit of damage coming in over the years. And I just think that looks really cool. Uh, it, it doesn't detract too much from what's going on in the rest of the zoo and the rest of this habitat itself, but it just adds that extra little bit to finish off a build. Uh, and I was really happy with this. I don't think there was much more to do. And I've had a lot of fun building this. It's been great to see. And all that's left to do now, actually, what I decided to do was create a little kind of advertising board. Now, the pictures that are on this aren't going to be permanent. Uh, I'd thought about putting in a couple of different advertising things, like I did with Around at the Grey Seal and the King Penguin Habitat, where we had feeding time advertised and things like that. But for now, it was just about making a little advertising board for the outside of this. And actually, we do need to do still a sign above the entrance so that guests know exactly where it is they're going. This one was fun to do. I did like use one of the little new otter um, stickers or decals, whatever they're called, and uh, gave him a little speech bubble. It was too small for the screen, and then the whole thing was too small, so we had to move that all out. And I just used a picture, that, a screenshot that I took, actually, if you saw the community post that I did uh, about this one being made, you'll see it then. Uh, so it's the picture from that and I duplicated this and had two of them one on either side of the habitat and I think what I might do is just do a little maybe we could use some like otter conservation posts or something like that or just a couple of otter facts I've seen some really nice stuff online and it would be good to start replicating that into these zoos and this is actually something that I could do on stream as well where we flesh out some of the advertising and things and just really do like a bit more of a marketing push or something I was going to have two otters on here and have like one fact on each speech bubble but it looked too busy and there was too much going on and when I put the TV screens in the two meter one seemed like the perfect size and then the one meter one was way too small so I wasn't getting like the desired effect that I wanted what I then did was try and mess around with some of the boogaloo fonts and then I thought I'm overcomplicating this massively like I always do. Let's just use some of these flat sh circle shapes and create kind of like a, th it looks more like a thought bubble than a speech bubble I guess now, but the otters don't think so. I mean, they, no, they do, how, what an awful thing to say, the otters do think, they just don't speak is what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> so it wouldn't be a speech bubble anyway for or not, it would be thought bubble. There we go, that's fine, we don't think we recovered that. Please don't unsubscribe. I am very kind to animals and I do like animals a lot. And they do think. They're very intelligent. Um, so this is just about finished. And uh, I just thought it was a nice little touch. Uh, it maybe needs a little bit of extra kind of like trimming and things on there, but I was pretty happy with it. It didn't need to move down a touch and have a little bit of centralized posting just to cover up the uh, imperfections with the uh, top kind of overlapping each other and there we have it this then got duplicated moved over to the other side where the staff bit is and obviously later on we're going to sort out that staff path and give that a little bit of TLC just to finish that off and then over here right next to that first mirrored glass we're going to sink that in and just match it up with the rest of the building itself. And there we have it. A couple more screens to go in maybe, but then we do need to do a little bit of work on the trims, getting them matched up to hide any kind of nasty stuff. And then over here, we just brought up the uh, dry stone wall right to the ceiling.
And that's very much the end of this one. So, I'm pretty sure you know what's about to happen, judging by the musical cue that we have coming in. It's almost time for a tour, and a new format for the tour. We're going to be using the new camera modes that we've been given, and taking a little bit of a guest view. I had considered putting in a few vending machines and stuff as well, but that's something for another episode. All right, here we go. We've got a nice long pan right across the entrance to this one to begin with. Uh, it looks really nice from the outside looking in. It'd be really good to have that sign that I keep talking about that I've missed, <laughs> just to, to give a little bit of direction to the whole thing. I'd also thought about putting in a couple of maps and things that have like you are here written on them and stuff like that, give everyone a little bit. That's kind of more of a finished zoo project anyway. Coming past the exterior viewing gallery, where not a lot of people seem to like to look in, except right here, when they first get here, they'll turn and have a look through the window. Fair enough, it's where the mud pit is, and that's fine. But yeah, it looks really cool. I'm really happy with this one. Maybe we'll put in a custom viewing area going around this section, but I'm really happy with how it looks at the moment. Anyway, so that's not too much of an issue. Moving to the interior here, this is the entrance for the pool coming past the sleeping area. The mud pit there. And then further around, a little bit more foliage with some toys and stuff for them. Going inside now, and here is the guest area. You can see the little bit of clipping that I mentioned earlier on there, but moving down, we've got a couple of education boards here, although that may need to move. And this guy, very happy. I don't know why, because his feet have clipped through a big block of wood. And look at that, how cute. Got a baby already. They're so cute. Oh my god, I'm in love. This <laughs> uh, another interior shot from looking the other way. Uh, I tried to get a little bit more of the other behaviors, but um, because it's a relatively small group at the moment, they're they're not really displaying. They're just spending a lot of time in the pool. So hopefully we'll see a little bit more of that. I just missed them playing in the mud pit, and that is a shame. But you do get a kind of like see them wandering around a little bit of the movements and things. But they're so cute, I really like them. It's a, such a good pack, this one. And uh, if I was going to say, if you want a pure animal pack and you're looking to get one, get this one. They've done a really good job of it, honestly. Uh, it's it's fantastic. Apart from the issue that we have now where we have to look at Northlands for all its uh, disgusting non-snow covered. <laughs> the truth of Northlands has been exposed. <laughs> Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did making it, and I'm really glad to be back. So hopefully we'll have a few more of these coming out in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you drop me a like, a comment, and a subscribe if you want to see more. See you next time. Bye-bye.